Greetings respected viewers, this is George from Ireland and in this video I'm going to be telling you why Irish people are British. There's often a false dichotomy proposed by people that someone can be either Irish or British but not both. Well, that's bogus. One certainly can be both. And when I tell other Irish people that we're British, they often say, no, I'm Irish, as though that means they can't be British as well. So this is not a binary uh, choice. I'm not going to go to historical reasons about why it's turned out this way. I've uh, made many other videos uh, about uh, Irish history. Um, but I remember when I was having this discussion with somebody from Kildare, and he was saying, if you told people at home that we're British, they'd hit you, you'd be on the floor. So I realised it, it, it incenses some people in Ireland, the idea that uh, they're British, and they don't, they don't want to be considered Brits, and they often think that's the very same as English, which it isn't. Um, so there's this visceral denial, and people seem quite uncomfortable when this uh, truth has been uh, uncovered. Anyway, there's so much in Ireland that uh, we share with Great Britain and Great Britain shares with us. They've learned from us as we've learned from them. them and uh, we've intermingled just so much, not just um, uh, intermarried, but uh, our culture and so on. We've both transmitted memes and received memes from each other. Um, well, <laughs> they could talk about the Westminster system and the Oroctus, and it's not exactly the same as in Westminster, his bicameral system. I know that's not unique. Uh, we could look at our legal system. I know that Queen's councils are senior councils in the Republic of Ireland, but our law is largely the same as it was um, when we were part of the United Kingdom. Obviously things have evolved over the past um, century or so, so new laws have come in, and new laws have been repealed both in the UK and the Republic of Ireland. But um, even the most uh, hardcore Republicans didn't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, as in strike down some perfectly serviceable laws in 1921. Um, uh, just because uh, they came from an era when we were connected to Great Britain doesn't mean they should be got rid of. We've got common law, um, and that's almost unique in Europe. All right, Malta and Cyprus share it, but that's it. Um, anyway, well, let's look at television. That's a very cosmopolitan medium of communication. Um, and their newspapers, those are also manifestly international. But anyway... Um, we look at the London-based newspapers are often sold in the Republic of Ireland. They often have Irish uh, editions of them. Or uh, the um, Irish Sun uh, is obviously a, a version of the UK Sun. Um, or there's an Irish version of the Sunday Times. I don't mean the Irish Times. Um, only a handful of those articles will be especially tailored to suit the Irish market. And um, in many of these articles it will still say the Queen. And we obviously know they're talking about the Queen of the United Kingdom or the Prime Minister. We obviously know they're talking about the, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Um, would these sell so well in the Republic of Ireland if we had no affinity for the United Kingdom? So the great majority of the articles in these publications are the very same in their Republic of Ireland edition and in their United Kingdom edition. Sometimes a single edition for the whole of Ireland, Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. Um, so there are many um, curious similarities. We've got the highest rate of dog ownership in Europe, Republic of Ireland, closely followed by the UK. Um, we've got the same fondness for tea. I know it's originally Chinese. We have a pub-based social life. And an academic from a university with a very large Irish studies department said um, those in, what would I call it, hibernicism, another word for Irish studies, um, don't like this pointed out. But um, the drinking culture in other countries is always a little bit different. It's not quite what, what we think of as a pub in either Ireland or Great Britain. Um, well, what are some other uh, quirks? These odd little customs like black cats supposed to be good luck in Ireland and Great Britain and white cats bad luck, whereas it's the opposite way, ar way around on the continent. So, um, oh, another thing where there's the inverse is the case on the continent, wedding ring is on the left hand here, whereas on the right hand in mainland Europe. Um, so the Bichelle suited and um, football shirt wearing denizens of Limerick are, are indistinguishable from their counterparts in Liverpool or anywhere else. And Liverpool's obviously the most Irish city in England. Um, and there was even an Irish nationalist MP up until 1928, T.P. O'Connor for the Scotland Road Division. So think about that. The Irish Home Rule Party had an MP in Great Britain, which emphasises just how much the two islands are not separate. I know there's the sea in between, only 12 miles at the closest point, 
but really, culturally, socially, psychologically, they're not separate. Um, anyway, I've outlined some points of fellowship. Now, none of them is hugely significant in itself, but the totality of them adds up to a shared way of life. And that's one of the um, bitter ironies of loyalists often saying, we want to stay in the UK because of our British way of life. As though the way of life in the Republic of Ireland is seriously different. Indeed, it's not. So the Irish language has been a minority interest for, well, at least 15 decades. But if it was so important to us, it wouldn't need to be compulsory in school. People would opt to learn it anyhow. We've had a century to go back to our ancestral language, and it hasn't happened. I've seen former Soviet countries where people have reverted to their uh, traditional language. For instance, Azerbaijan, where they really have gone back to Azerbaijan. It's the only official language, and Russian is spoken less and less. Or I could point out the same about Georgia or many other countries. Um, if this were so essential to our self-respect, then virtually everyone would uh, uh, elect to speak Irish anyway. And Southern Ireland is one of the few places in the world to still use British spelling and not American spelling. We have adopted Americanisms, but um, not more so than um, Great Britain. Um, ah, the British Lions, the Rugger team. Um, it suggests that to, to some degree we share a common identity. Now I know something like 20 years ago the name was changed to the British and Irish Lions because obviously many people in Ireland uh, take exception to the word British being applied to us. Um, but the RNLI still exists, Royal National Lifeboat Institution, uh, and nobody seems to uh, object to the word Royal being there or symbols like that. I think the Cross of St George, which is a flag of England, is even on it. There's no protest about that. The annual BBC um, Sports Awards includes the Republic of Ireland's teams. And um, Mick McCarthy, years ago, that was there speaking about it. Obviously, many people in the Republic of Ireland's football squad were born in Great Britain and or grew up there. Um, so there's so much affection in the UK for us. Um, anyway, uh, so broadly speaking, we like the same sports. I know the Gaelic games as well. Um, so we're, we're all part of the same family. There's um, sympathy for uh, each other's sports teams between Ireland and England. Oddly, though, between England and Scotland, there's often loathing. We're more from the Scots towards the English, not really the other way around. Remember uh, in 2001, the Sun newspaper did a survey. It said one in six people in Great Britain had some uh, Irish ancestry. Um, there must be more who don't know about it, or maybe too distant in some cases. Obviously, the ethnic minority people almost never have it, as in British Pakistanis, British Chinese, British Nigerians. Um, they almost never have Irish forebears. So if you look at the white Britons, the, the figure would be rather higher than one in six. Um, anyway, uh, over a million people born in the Republic of Ireland dwell in the UK, and many of them have reached very high positions in their chosen profession. There's been free movement between these islands for many centuries. Um, and there's only been free movement between the European Union and the, well, the UK and the rest of the EU for about 25 years. Um, so to say that neighbours always have a large population exchange is untrue. Uh, very few Israelis move to Lebanon or vice versa. Uh, few Greeks would go to Turkey. No Indians go to Pakistan these days. Or, or not many Chinese go to Taiwan. And the British Passport Office in Dublin renews over 70,000 passports per year. We know these passports last for 10 years. Some people have to get them renewed more often than that. So there are at least 700,000 people in the Republic of Ireland with British citizenship. Now, a passport is more than just a flag of convenience. It's an identity document. So um, the UK uh, has few preferential travel arrangements that the Republic of Ireland does not share. The UK has many enemies, the Republic of Ireland, well, we've got none. So people opting to have uh, British uh, passports must show that they have some allegiance to uh, the United Kingdom or to the, the idea of the British Isles being united in some form. Possession of this passport surely signals that one is somewhat loyal to her, her uh, Britannic Majesty. So there's only a minority of people in the Republic of Ireland can get them. Until 1981, people in the Republic of Ireland were allowed to get British passports. Then Maggie Thatcher said, well, you don't want to be part of the UK? Fine, but you lose the right to gain this passport. Um, the Cross of St. Patrick is still part of the Union flag. Um, that's uh, that um, red saltire on a white field, like a red X shape. 
the um, harp of Ireland is on St. Patrick's blue. That's a mid-blue, the traditional colour of Ireland. It's only in the 19th century that nationalism became associated as the Irish colour. Anyway, that, that um, uh, harp of Ireland is still on the royal coat of arms, the United Kingdom, because Northern Ireland is still in the UK. So many nationalists in Ireland can tell you of US presidents, presidents who had some Irish uh, ancestry, but very few people could tell you of all the British prime ministers who were Irish enough to play rugby for Ireland, or indeed claim citizenship, if such a thing as Irish citizenship had existed long ago. Um, this is that you're either Irish born or you have at least one grandparent born anywhere in Ireland. So under such a definition, Blair would be Irish. Um, obviously John Major, um, Andrew Bonal Law, Viscount Palmerston, the Marcus of Lansdowne, the Duke of Newcastle, Henry Pelham, George Canning, the Duke of Wellington. There may be some I've missed out. Some have got more distant Irish ancestry, like um, uh, Margaret Thatcher, one eighth Irish, likewise Sir Winston Churchill. Uh, there may be more whom I have escaped my notice. So far from us being marginalised and discriminated against, we were elevated to the very highest offices in the land. And you may dismiss this saying, oh, they're upper class. Well, it's not only the working class and middle class who are Irish, we have all social classes in Ireland, or saying they're Protestants. Well, well yes, that's true, um, but that's a sectarian thing to say, as though the uh, Protestant minority, something like 20% of the Irish population, are not Irish. That's bigoted. And um, we, we are no longer Catholic Ireland. It's not been our constitution since 1971 in the Republic. And we have like Muslim Irish people, and many people are atheist and non-religious, as this recent referendum has uh, underlined. So um, anyway, uh, we um, were in power in London even before the Union, even before 1801. Um, nationalists may dismiss these people, but it would be wrong to do so. They still very much count. And yes, it's true that obviously until uh, 1829, the Catholic majority were excluded from political power. So yeah, that's the reason why those who became prime minister were only Protestants. Um, so, but, but same as some nationalists would say, well, look at Edward Fitzgerald or Parnell and so on. You see, Protestants can be nationalists. So trying to have it both ways. Protestants count when they're on your side, but not when they're on the other side. Um, anyway, in the 18th and 19th centuries, we know politics was the preserve of the upper class in Ireland, Great Britain and everywhere else. Um, so only a minority of people um, in the Republic of Ireland are British citizens, but we're still all ethnically and culturally British, which is not to deny being Irish, it's the fulfilment of being Irish. Uh, we can be Irish inside being British, inside being European and so on. We have a multi-layered identity. There is no contradiction whatsoever in being Irish and being British.